Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a system of equations. So we have x squared minus xy minus xz is equal to 5, y squared minus yz minus xy is equal to negative 4, and z squared minus xz minus yz is equal to negative 7. And we're going to be looking for xyz values, real or complex. So what are we going to do? Well, here's what I'm going to do for this system. I'll take let me go ahead and number these equations. Let's call this one number one, let's call this number two, and let's call this number three. So I'm going to be working with a pair of equations every time. So let's go ahead and take number one and number two. So what I'd like to do is since the first equation starts with x squared and the second one starts with y squared, I'm going to go ahead and take the first equation and multiply that by y. So let me go ahead and write it down. So it's going to be x squared minus xy minus xz equals 5. And the second equation is going to be y squared minus yz minus xy is equal to negative 4. So I'm going to go ahead and take the first equation and multiply both sides by y. And the second equation I'll multiply by x. And let's see what happens here. We're going to get a lot of cancellations and we're going to end up with a nice term. So the first one, I'm going to try to write them in alphabetical order. So x, x squared y minus xy squared minus xyz is equal to 5y. And the second one gives me xy squared minus xyz minus x squared y and that equals negative 4x. So if you take these two equations, obviously, and add them up side by side, you're going to notice that a lot of things or, or terms will cancel out. For example, x squared y minus x squared y is equal to 0, xy squared minus xy squared is equal to 0. And you're going to end up with negative 2xyz is equal to 5y minus 4x. So let's go ahead and save that. We're going to use that when we're done with all these pairs of equations. So let's go ahead and use 2 and 3 now. Okay. What about equations 2 and 3? Let's go ahead and copy those. Well, the second equation is going to be, as you know, it's going to start with y squared. So it's going to look like y squared minus yz minus xy is equal to negative 4, which is the bottom one in the first pair. And the uh, third equation is going to be z squared minus xz minus yz is equal to negative 7. And we're going to go ahead and multiply these by something just like the first one. Let's multiply the first one by z and the second one by y. And you'll notice that it's going to give us something similar. So let's go ahead and carry out the... Uh, calculations. Uh, we're going to get y squared z minus yz squared minus xyz is equal to negative 4z. And now from here we get yz squared minus xyz minus y squared z and that's going to equal negative 7y. Now when we go ahead and add these equations again, notice that the terms are going to cancel out. For example, y squared z minus y squared z, yz squared minus yz squared, and we're going to end up with something similar just like the, the one before, negative 2xyz is equal to negative 7y minus 4z. Obviously, it's a different expression on the right-hand side, but if you look at the left-hand side, they are equal. All right, now we're going to go ahead and take 1 and 3 together. Let's go ahead and do that. The first equation is going to be x squared minus xy minus xz is equal to 5. And the third one is z squared minus xz minus yz is equal to negative 7. And I'm going to go ahead and multiply the first one by z and the second one by x. And now we're going to do the same thing pretty much. We get x squared z minus xyz minus xz squared is equal to 5z. And then from here we get xz squared minus x squared z minus xyz and that equals negative 7x. And if we add these up again, we're going to be getting what? Well, just like before, xz squared is going to cancel out, x squared z is going to cancel out. We're going to end up with negative 2xyz, and that is going to equal 5z minus 7x. So that's going to be my third equation. If you want, you can number these 4, 5, and 6, but that's not super important. Now, with those three equations, since everything is equal to negative 2xyz, then they're equal to each other, so we're going to just put it together. So we have something like 5y minus 4x is equal to negative 7y minus 4z, and that is equal to 5z minus 7x. Okay, now what does this give us? Well, 
it kind of gives us uh, an opportunity to express one of the variables in terms of the other two. Uh, but how do you choose which one to use? Well, in this case, I'm going to try to isolate z from both of these equation pairs. So I'll take these two and go ahead and uh, isolate the z. Let's go ahead and put the 4z here, and then let's uh, add um, 4x to both sides and then subtract 5y. So that's going to give me 4x minus 12y. And if you divide both sides by 4, you should be getting something like z equals x minus 3y. So that's going to be another equation that I'll be using soon. And then by using the other two, like these two, I'll be getting another expression which I can use. And I'm going to write it as negative 7y minus 4z. Well, actually, I could probably just carry out the calculation just like before. So my goal is going to be to put the z's on the same side. So if you, if you go ahead and add 4z to both sides, you're going to be getting something like 9z, right? 9z is equal to 7x minus 7y. And then our goal here is, remember, to isolate z. So let's go ahead and divide both sides by 9. And that's going to give us the following. So z is equal to 7x minus 7y over 9, as well as x minus 3y. So what is that supposed to mean? If two things are equal to the same thing, then they're equal, which means that now we get a relationship uh, between x and y. So let's go ahead and set those equal to each other. And let's see what happens from there. OK, cool. Now I'm going to set x minus 3y equal to 7x minus 7y over 9. And then here I'll cross multiply. That's going to give me 9x minus 27y is equal to 7x minus 7y. If you go ahead and put the x's on the left and y's on the right, you're going to be getting something like 2x is equal to 20y. And if you simplify, you get x equals 10y. This is a very important piece of information because now I can just go ahead and use this in the original equations. But we do need to find another thing, which is finding z in terms of y as well. Since we, are, we were able to express z in terms of x and y, let's go ahead and take that equation z equals x minus 3y, z equals x minus 3y. And here, if you replace x with 10y, z is going to equal 10y minus 3y, which is equal to 7y. So this gives us z equals 7y. Now, we were able to find that these values are pretty much, uh, you know, uh, proportional. Is that what is that the word? OK, cool. Maybe when I'm done with this, I'm going to talk about something else that could also lead to this type of solution. It's probably going to be a little easier than this, but I, I don't know why I haven't thought about it in the first place. But anyway, let's continue. So once I get these, what I can do is I can take one of these equations. Doesn't really matter which one, because obviously all of them are going to satisfy these two relationships. So let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and use the first one, for example. The first equation was, if you remember, x squared minus xy minus xz is equal to 5. So let's go ahead and plug these in. Let's see what happens. Well, if you replace x with 10y, you're going to square that, don't forget. And then x will be, x will be replaced with 10y. And then again, 10y and z will be replaced with 7y. And this whole thing equals 5. Let's go ahead and simplify this. Everything in is in terms of y, so it should be easy. 100y squared minus 10y squared minus 70y squared is equal to 5. This is 20y squared, if you simplify that. And if you divide both sides by 20, you're going to be getting y squared is equal to 1 fourth, which gives us two solutions. There are two numbers whose square is 1 fourth, basically. One of them is y equals 1 half. The other one is negative 1 half. And let's see what happens by using each of these y values. Let's go ahead and find the x and z values. But remember, x is equal to 10y. So x is going to be 5 if y is equal to 1 half. And z is equal to 7y. So z is going to be 7 halves. So that's going to give me my first ordered pair. But let me go ahead and finish up the other one. And then I'll write my solutions as an ordered pair. OK? And in this case, the permutations don't matter. So I can go ahead and write it as ordered triples because, did I say ordered pair? OK, it should be ordered triples because here they can't switch around. Obviously, uh, they have to be in this form. OK, because we have a unique value for y, which is not symmetrical. So if y is equal to negative 1 half, everything is going to be negated, basically. x is going to be negative 5, and z is going to be negative 7 half. And this makes sense because uh, notice that the variables are either squared or multiplied by another variable, which means that they're all pretty much quadratic. And uh, it doesn't matter whether you have a negative value or a positive value, because the product was, is always going to be positive. That's why we got these values. OK, so now my solution set in this case then is going to be comprised of two order triples, and they're going to look like the following. 5 comma 1 half comma 7 halves is going to be one of my order triples. And the other order triple is going to be negative 5 comma negative 1 half comma negative 7 halves. So basically, this system of equations have 
two solutions and we found all of them and they're all real. Now, having thought about this now, since uh, we're getting some ratio between these variables, I can safely say that one of the methods you could basically use is at the beginning of this solution, whatever, you know, uh, you could, I guess, safely assume that, uh, okay, let y equals kx and z equals mx. And then just proceed from, of course, you don't have to relate y to x. You can also do the same thing with x between y and z. But obviously, when you plug these in, since you have uh, equations that are homogeneous on the left-hand side, you can go ahead and plug them in and hopefully you should get something nice from here as well. All right, well, this brings us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.